Good morning and welcome back to Barmouth in Wales. Well, I've done it, maybe for the first time ever. I've woken up at 6.30 and I'm heading off at 7.30 on a Saturday morning. Today I've got a gigantic journey. I'm going, assuming I don't stop even once, for seven hours, 45 minutes, and around about, I think it's about 450 miles or so. I'll be going down to the Brecon Beacons, past the Ellen Valley, and if I'm lucky and if I have time, I may even stop off at Baffle House, which is a, a custom bike and car shop, a petrol heads meeting point down near the Brecon Beacons before heading off directly east to Ipswich, near enough on the far east coast of England. So it's going to be a huge day and that's why I've woken up so early. Sunrise is just in front of me there, piercing into my eyes because I woke up at 6.30 and it's now 7.40. So this is just about as early as I've ever woken up. It's already, if you can believe it, in September in Wales, 19 degrees. And it is impossible for me to have caught today on a more beautiful day weather-wise. In fact, it's so nice. I don't think there's anywhere I'd rather be. It really is that beautiful just before all of the crowds come as well. Right, there's not, genuinely, not a moment to waste because I have to make the most of every single second today. So, the bike is 30 seconds that way. Let's get started. been going for an hour. I've had the roads pretty much completely to myself but the sun's gone and the temperature's dropped. It feels like by about three degrees or so so the winter gears back out. I've got 45 minutes to get to my first proper stop off which is the Allen Valley and I wasn't planning to stop here originally but so many of you kindly got in touch and said this is a genuine unmissable beauty spot in Wales. So I checked Google Maps and it turns out, luckily enough, that the Ellen Valley just so happens to be almost exactly on my route down to the Brecon Beacons.
Welcome to the Elan Valley. Behind me is one of the massive reservoirs, and I usually like doing a bit of Googling to see where I am, but there's no signal. So I'll do as best I can, because I was just speaking to another biker who's just finished a 70 mile, or maybe halfway through a 70 mile cycle ride, and he's just informed me that four miles up the road, it's closed, I think because there's a car rally up ahead. So I've almost come as far as I possibly can on this road, but I'll do a bit of B-roll in shade behind me. You know, when I'm planning for a trip, you may be able to hear actually, motorbikes all around me. It's a proper biking hotspot. When I'm planning for a trip, I'll get a huge amount of my inspiration from magazines, whether it's travel and motorbikes. And a subscription service that I've been using for a long time now is Readly, whereby for a small fee every month, you can have unlimited access to over seven and a half thousand different magazine and newspaper subscriptions. Whatever you're interested in, whatever your hobby may be, whether you like current affairs, politics, travel, fashion, Readly will have multiple different titles for you. For me, for example, Bike Magazine, which is Motorcycle Focus Magazine, Motorcycle Reviews, Biking Travel, things like that is one of my favorites. And an important part for me is with Readly in general, you can look through all of the old back issues. So when I am doing my weekly podcast, I can look back through the old Bike Magazine issues and I can see, ah, scroll through September 2013, I can check the prices of the old bikes from 10 years ago and it creates really interesting content for the podcast. Another magazine is the National Geographic that I read a lot, not just for travel inspiration but for beautiful photography as well. That's got brilliant, brilliant inspiration for locations, destinations I would never have considered before. And finally, this is one I didn't expect to get so into, Metro Newspaper, the free newspaper in London. And since I've left London, I haven't been able to read it. So now every now and again, I'll go on to Readly and just flick through the Metro Newspaper, just so I can feel in contact with London and know what's going on in the capital. Two other important bits, one, Readly allows me in the palm of my hand to have seven and a half thousand different titles. So I'm not having to lug around lots of different magazines and newspapers. It's a brilliant space saving option, especially when traveling. And when traveling, if you're on a plane or if you're in a place with no data, no signal, you don't have to worry. You can download any edition you want. So you can have offline, regardless of whether you've got any signal, you can have an, a complete selection of different magazines and newspapers, regardless of where you are in the world. So if you are interested in checking out Readly, you can get, if you click on the link in the description below, two months free subscription and you can cancel any time you like. It's a petrol heads paradise here. Limitless, endless, lines of bikers whizzing along. There's a Lotus over there just to my left. Two classic MGs have gone past. You can just sit here, have your ginger shot, watch the world go by with the most eclectic mix of vehicles. Welcome to Baffle House. You know, I don't think I've ever seen so many bikes flying by as I have over the past three hours. It seems to be about 15 bikes every five minutes or so. I also didn't expect Baffle House to be this, this busy. It's packed with bikes and cars. I also didn't expect it to be a genuine car place as well. We've got off-roaders for sale, classic Range Rovers, Defender, Defender, I could go on and on. And on this side, Bentley, Porsche, Audi, and I think Porsche 94, etc., etc. And here, everyone's bikes parked outside. So what I'll do, I'll flip the camera 
and do as much of a walk around as I can because this place is heaving. Okay, I'm going to do a front to back and apologies if you can't hear me over the noise of all the motorbikes. So, everyone coming in here, thank you. Let me show you a few of the bikes outside the front because there are a couple of really special ones. These Jotters, I've never seen these in the flesh and to have a pair of them like that is beautiful. I was just speaking to the owner or one of the four owners of this place of Baffle House and he said that actually this isn't ridiculously busy. Tomorrow, Sunday, will be the really busy day but you can see people still pouring in. And then going down to the side, beautiful lineup of Harleys and a mixture of off-road bikes. I saw a massive group of off-road riders heading off into the hills just behind me. Classic BMW, Honda Rebel, another beautiful BMW there. Harleys, Triumphs, sports bikes, Ducatis. Food in the corner. See, this is all new since I was last here three years ago. So that's where you can grab a bite to eat. And then, in here, oh, I just have to turn around because a rocket's just arrived. See people sitting here. And then inside you've got the coffee shop at the back with just an incredible selection of motorbikes stacked on top of each other. And I'll see if I can peer behind them because I've just seen a massive amount of incredible cars. So you've got modified Honda, Harley Davidson Tracker, Old Royal Enfield, Mota Guzzi, Meteor, and see if I can see through here a selection of projects being worked on. So, what would that be? An old Corvette there with an amazing selection of cars and motorbikes. It's like a dream place. Vauxhall VX220, Morgan the sports car, and all the Japanese stuff along there. Classic Honda, Kawasaki, Kawasaki, and a Norton. You can see other people peering through there as well. And the coffee shop there, so you can grab a cake, grab a coffee. It's brilliant. They've got it all kitted out now. And I think also, they do gear as well. So selection of helmets. And this is the team. All five of them that started it around about three years ago. Such a brilliant setup, seating areas, places to eat, places to just chill out and to catch it on such a beautiful day like today. That's perfect. I've grabbed Ollie, who's one of the five guys who originally started Hi everyone. Baffle House. I'm about to flip the camera, let him talk about the history of how this started. But it was three years ago, Ollie, I came here and yeah. all you were doing was, was coffee. Yeah, that was our third year. Yeah, that was our first year even. That was our first year starting. So you, you were an OG, you were in at the start. I can't believe how it's transformed. I couldn't believe that, yeah. I was just saying earlier, the middle of nowhere, Welsh countryside, to have somewhere so packed like this yeah. is one of the best biker petrol head destinations I've ever seen. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm yeah. going to flip the camera. Okay. Just give me a bit of history about Baffle House and also you've got to walk me around. So I'd love to. Vehicles. All right, let's have a look everyone. So, um, so how it all started, yeah, it was five friends and we were riding bikes together and uh, I used to, I've been here 13 years. I used to run an engineering business here and luckily got out of it just before COVID. And then we started serving takeaway coffees. Uh, I'm a big petrol head and so I started doing uh, car repairs and, and building little race cars for myself and then selling cars for customers. And now that is everything that you see here. So You're, you're quite mechanically minded. I'm mechanically minded, but I'm not allowed to touch anything because I'm heavy handed too and I break things. <laughs> so I've got a trusted pair of mechanics and yeah, so this is the low classic side of things and we've got baffle over that side and the synergy between the two is excellent because as the stock changes, there's something different for people to come and see for coffee every week. Um, and so it works really well. So then we get, you know, you might come in with a coffee, for a coffee and leave with a car, uh, which would be nice. Um, but yeah. What would you describe yourself as, Ali? Equal parts biker and car enthusiast? Um, over the years, I mean, I, I was always cars, 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 but over the years, I lean more towards bikes now because of the adventures, the friendship and the people. Yeah. Um, I still love cars and it's a big passion of mine, but nothing beats getting on the road with your mates on bikes. 
Can you give me, it's so hard here, yeah. because there's so much to see. I've been about 20 minutes in here. <laughs> Three minutes, walk me around as much as you can. Three minutes. What you've got here, because this is all your stuff, and eventually would it all be for sale in some aspects? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Well, uh, I mean, to start, we've got the memorabilia. So for years, I've been collecting uh, Goodwood, Le Mans, all that kind of stuff, and I've been racing in motorsport myself, and so picked up little trinkets and bits and pieces everywhere you go. So, um, but then we've got things like, um, not a Lotus Elise, it's a Vauxhall VX220. I actually identified this. Yeah. I remember when these came out, these are really underrated cars. Oh, they are. And this is the two litre turbo one. So this is the um, balls out fast one. And that's 7,000 miles and for sale now. And it's less than 20 grand. So it's a lot of car for the money. Wow. Um, and it's really well looked after. Do you hand pick the money? I don't know, no. Uh, the cars kind of find us. So we're, we're really well trusted in the industry to take your car in. And we're like estate agents for cars. So we sell everything on sale or return, and we just keep a small finder's fee, and then we do all the marketing. But we've got 2,000 people a week from the doors here now, so it's a great place to have your car on sale. That's fascinating. Yeah, fascinating. works really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so moving around here, um, this is my baby. Uh, so this is a 106 Rally. This is actually low classics, like teen car, so I'm building it with the mechanics, and we're going to use it for publicity and marketing and, uh, and the odd track day and things like that. And, um, Again, I, I remember this from when I was younger, yeah. 106 GTI, uh, 106 Rally, well, sorry, not 106 GTI. 106 Rally, so when yeah, I was yeah. 17, that was my dream car. Yeah. So fast forward, I'm yeah. 41 now, I've got it, <laughs> which is quite it's nice. Amazing. Well, the company's got it, but yeah, but it's a, it's a lovely thing to have. Yeah. yeah, and I can see the condition of that. Oh yeah, we, we've, we've done a really good job perfect, of this. Perfect, isn't yeah. it? Uh, so, um, so yeah, and then next we've got a low mileage, um, you know, holy grail car to most car enthusiasts, the 911. Uh, this is a manual rear wheel drive C2S and it's done 60,000 miles full Porsche service history. So that's a special one. Again, again, everything you see here is for sale if anyone wants to slide into my DMs. Um, Audi R8, 40,000 miles. Uh, that's a V8 manual. So what do you pick out of those two? You know, they were both about the same price new in 2008. So uh, that's for, me, tough. for me at the moment, R8. Um, but, you know, that could change depending on the mood. Um, I think I'd do the same. Then we got a Ferrari 512 Berlinetta Boxer. Uh, one owner, 18,000 miles, stored in a damp barn in uh, Ebervale, of all places. And it's in for restoration, the engine's out being done. And we've had this here a while now. The next job is going to be going to Portsmouth, being fully painted, welded, and all the rest of it. Uh, so you will do the do you do the mechanics here? We do, and then the and body shop stuff if needed by specialists. We've got specialist. three specialist body shops that we use, depending on what the job is, and then really high-end mechanics like an engine rebuild on a Ferrari is way above our skill set. So that would go off to someone else. Yeah. And what's the the tax disc on there, Ollie? The tax is 2002 was yeah. the last time. Yeah. <laughs> um, then over wow. here, so what everyone will recognise is a DeLorean. Um, so I tried to go back in time in this. It doesn't actually sadly work at the moment, <laughs> that bit. But you can have a look. And this will be the first time I've ever seen inside one of these. Yeah, this is, uh, and then what you really need is you can't have a DeLorean without that number plate. <laughs> um, so that's one owner, 14,000 miles. And wow. Freddie, one really wow. interesting thing here is, this is what the DeLoreans were cleaned with. So that is a Brillo pad. That, that's, uh, and it's wait, raw, this is strange. Yeah, that's raw stainless steel. And you um, clean it with that. You, you, yeah, you clean it with that, and you have to go in the same direction down the car, and you use a specialist uh, shampoo I and sealer. I had no idea. Um, yeah, and uh, this is one of the most original left, um, and a very valuable model. But uh, yeah, um, how's that for three minutes? <laughs> Ollie, thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. Hugely, um, if anyone wants to come down, they want a tour of the garage, or they want to come down for coffee and have a chat with me, or any of the bafflers, uh, just come on down, and we'd be pleased to see you. Brilliant. Cheers. And I'll put all of your details, Insta page and everything in the written Thank you. description Thank you. Much love, everyone. Continuing on, this again is new for me. I didn't realise I'd opened a clothing section. So just opposite the classic cars, the store, you can see them working away, getting together with all the social media. And look at this, it just gets better and better. I mean, that is... Stunning. So you've got Merlin gear on the right hand side, Knox armor. This is actually Monica's gear of choice. Just wear that underneath whatever you're wearing. Usually I need to get some of this because I've never owned Under Armour. Krieger here, Baffle House gear on this wall. This is brilliant. I love it when they do their own branded stuff. Deus. And coming around here, ladies stuff as well. With a selection of helmets. 
trip machine. All so well laid out. I love these DMD helmets. These are very, very nice retro open face helmets. John Doe. Very, very nice selection. Really very good selection of stuff. And I'll come out to the window and show you how it looks on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. All types of bikes, from learner bikes to massive Harley Davidsons. And all of the 4x4s that are for sale on the back there. And I've just seen something that's pulled up here. Ferrari with the owner just putting the roof down, the roof down, just putting the bonnet down. Hopefully it hasn't broken down because that is a beauty. There's a group of guys outside, all of them between I think the age of 65 and 70, and they've all just been five hours riding off road. This is one of those three gentlemen's bikes that he's currently selling through Low Classics. This is a Norton, Norton frame, Norton engine, 1957 frame, 1971 engine, done up like an Isle of Man racer, and it's currently for sale. Reason he's selling? He said, can you imagine me actually riding this on the road at 71 years old? And I probably cannot argue with him. This wouldn't be the first word in comfort, I'm sure. I've been speaking to three Irish bikers who've come all the way over here. They've been riding for three to four days and they're heading back tomorrow. I'm going to flip the camera and show you these because this is some mission they've done and they're by far the filthiest bikes out of all of them here. That's Catherine and Jerry there just getting a picture. I thought I'd film them. So these are two of the owners here, all the way from Ireland. Okay, here we go. Let's show the first one. This is a night train and I think this is Clouders. So she's owned it since 2007. Irish plates. And this is all she's taken. There's nothing else on top of this at all. That's it for about a four day trip or so. Take a look at the pipes. I asked her if, if that's loud and she, she nodded. That will be ear piercingly loud, I'm sure. And this is exactly how bikes should look. It is filthy. It's so rare to see a Harley in such a filthy state. Owned since new from 2007, that's Clouders. Okay, I'll carry on and show the second of the three Harleys all the way from Ireland. I feel even bad admitting it, but I'm not 100% sure which model is. Is that there? Someone let me know. I can't remember which model this is, but again, packing lightly. All they've got are the two panniers, and I tell you what, they may appreciate this. Catherine, I think I said the night train was filthier, but this will give the night train a run for its money. That's a filthy Harley. And the final one of the three, this is Jerry's, and this is up here with the Harley jacket on top. Again, 2007 Harley, fat boy. I think it's got about 11,000 miles on or so, and this is quite different to the others because it's much more elaborately styled with beautiful tank paintwork with the flames there. I think this is Jerry's second one, first one crashed, so he went out, I think, if I'm right, and bought a second-hand one, and that is this one. So all three of them go around, well, around Ireland and sometimes over to Wales as well, and they smash out the mileage. I think one of them has 55,000 miles on the clock.
on the blues again. Hey, hey, hear what I say, ain't got me no love. Well, it's happened two or three or four times before. You think it wouldn't even mess with a woman no more. But I love our blues and those tender arms. I got the ink, got the blood on the blues again. Hey, hey, hear what I say, ain't got me no love. And that's the end of my little Welsh adventure. By the end, I had to drag myself away from Baffle House because the atmosphere, the vibe, the people coming and going with different vehicles, it's all just completely off the scale. It's so fun. It's one of the finest biking petrol head destinations that I've ever been to. It's so good, Baffle House, that I would genuinely recommend it for people, even if you have to travel for five hours just to come there, because the location as well, situated on the edge of the Brecon Beacons, it means that you can go there, have a bite to eat, have a coffee, stare in wonder at one of the most eclectic selections of motorcycles and also cars as well that I've seen in one place. It's a magical place. And what they've done in the past three years since I last visited is phenomenal. The amount they've expanded the level of interest with the gear, the food, the coffee, everything. It's a very, very special place. And Wales in general, Snowdonia National Park at the top, spectacular. Down to the Elan Valley, somewhere in the middle. Again, beautiful, and it's almost boring. You get down to the Brecon Beacons, and yes, it's beautiful again. And when you get it with weather like it is, especially this afternoon, blue sky, there really is no need to travel anywhere else. It is that glorious. I've now got a four hour solid ride to get back. And if I don't stop at all, I'm going to be back about 8.30. So in reality, knowing, knowing the speed I ride at and the amount of stop-offs I do, I think I'll be back home at about 10 p.m. But that doesn't matter at all. I don't want my time in Wales to end. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this little three-part series. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you all in the next one.